Hello, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and on this video I wanted to talk about the mid-side technique. So for this video I decided to talk about the long, complicated process of the mid-side technique. Um, it's also known as the mid-side matrix or mid-side EQ. Um, there's a lot of names for it, so whatever you want to call it. Um, I have an accompanying article on our website at www.pro-tools-pc.com uh, where I discuss more of the details of what is going on when you set up the mid-side matrix. So the reason for wanting to do a mid-side matrix in this situation is the purpose of giving me the ability to access the middle and the sides of the signal separately. In most situations, you can think about your center channel as containing the most important information, such as the low end of the mix, so the kick drum, bass guitar, things like that, along with the snare, the vocals, and uh, those prominent instruments. The sides uh, might contain more information like the guitars, the keyboards, uh, the drum room and overhead mics, effects returns, uh, things like that. Obviously, this is all dependent on the mix. I'm just stating as uh, what I see more as the norm. Uh, using the mid-side technique, you can change the width of the audio. You can also EQ and compress the mids separately from the sides or the sides separately from the mids. You can also do some more surgical things like DSing the center channel uh, if you needed to. Uh, you also have the ability to add, say, reverb or effects to a mixed file to the center channel channel or to the side separately. So let's get rid of all of these tracks and let's build this from the ground up. So first, let's start with an audio track. This is where the audio files will be placed. Everything from here will be auxiliary tracks. We won't be using any more audio tracks. So the first thing we want to do is you can name the track if you like. In my case, I just named it audio. You can name it whatever you like. You can set the input to no input. And then we want to set the output. You don't have to use this exact order of outputs. You can rename them however you want to do it. But I'm just going to kind of do this in a real simple, straightforward manner. So let's just take this bus output and let's send it to bus 1-2. So now let's go and create a couple stereo auxiliary tracks. And let's name our first one here, we'll just name it mid. And let's name our next one sides. And let's set the input on both of these to bus one, two to accept this output. So if you're on PC, uh, you got both of these tracks selected. You can just hold shift alt, go down to your bus and we set both of the tracks. So we need to set both of these to mono outputs. So in that case, we could set our mid to bus three. And let's set the sides to mono bus four. So now let's go and instantiate the plugins we'll be using to flip the phase with. Uh, you can use something like, say, the Avid EQ3-1 band, but the catch is we have to be able to separate the left and the right. In order to do that, you have to use a multi-mono plugin. So if we come over here to EQ, let's find EQ3-1 band. And to unlink the left and the right, there's a little link button right here. So we can click the link button. And then if we switch to right, these are independent controls. So let's just show you. Let's jump back to left. And there's our right. So we don't flip the phase or do anything to this mono channel. We're actually only flipping the phase on the right side of the sides track. Now as another option, what I prefer to use is the time adjuster plugin. So let's go under delay. And let's go to time adjuster. And then this you can even use a stereo plugin if you want. You have independent control of the left and right right here on the UI. It's easily accessible. Uh, to duplicate plugins from one channel to another, hold down Alt on Windows and you can just drag it right next. Now you can't drag stereo into a mono channel, just to be clear. So, like I said, we want to flip the phase on the right side of the sides track. 
So now we have this layer set up, ready to go. Now let's create three mono auxiliary tracks. So let's set the name on these, and on the first one we'll just call it Mid Mix. And let's call the next one Left. And let's call the next one Right. So from here let's go and set up the inputs and the outputs on these new mono auxiliary tracks. So on the Mid Mix channel, let's set the input to match this mid output. So we set it to bus three, and then we need to set the output to a unique stereo channel. So let's take this and go to bus seven and eight. And then on the left and right, let's set the input on them both to bus four. And then once again, we need to set these to a stereo linkable channel. So what we'll do is set these to five on the left and six on the right. So let's go to bus five and bus six. And now if you wanted to, you could come in and set these two to the same color. And now that we have the routing set up on these, we're gonna do the same thing as far as inserting the plugin to flip the phase. So let me come back over here to time adjuster. So like I said, you can't drag a stereo to a mono track. You'll get an error such as that right there. So we have to instantiate the first one and then we can just copy the next ones. And now we have it on the mid mix, the left and the right. And once again, right channel, let's flip the phase. And then now what we want to do is let's create another stereo aux. And what we want to use this one for is to combine the left and right into a single channel. So let's name this uh, for this situation. Let's name it LR Mix. Now we need to set the input and output of the channel. So for the input, we want to accept the outputs of this left and right here. So let's go to bus and we want to accept five and six. Now five will discreetly feed the left and the six will discreetly feed the right side of the stereo. And then let's set the output of this channel to the same bus we have selected here on the mid mix. So in this case it is bus seven and eight. Okay, and now we need to create one more stereo aux. And on this stereo aux is where we are going to combine this mid-mix channel and the left-right mix channel. So we know we have the output of both of these set to bus 7 and 8. So let's set the input to 7 and 8. And we can keep the aux uh, to go to our outputs. We could send it to another auxiliary track. It kind of depends on your goal, what you're going for. In this case, we'll say let's just leave it set right to the hardware outputs. So once we have that set, we can go down and name it. So in this case, let's just name it summed. And let's create a stereo master fader. And let me set up some of my colors a little bit, how I like to do it. So we have one more thing we need to do. We need to take the mid and the side channels and drop the level on them 6 dB a piece. We're doing this so the gain levels do not accumulate. So let's take this. And if you hold down control on PC, you can get fine control. I believe that is option on the Mac. From here, there are um, extras, if you wanted to call them that, we could add to the session. So like at the very beginning, um, I had talked about setting up a reference track. So if we wanted to do that, let's create another stereo aux track. Name it reference. And let's set the input of this to an empty stereo bus. So we'll take bus 9 and 10. And then how I like to work is I would drag this bus all the way down here on the other side of the audio. And then on this audio track, I would set up a send output. So let's set it to bus nine and 10. Center out the fader, and then let's make it a pre-fader send. So any muting we do say here on this channel won't affect the send. So now we have a track we can jump back to to reference the original unaltered audio. 
And on that note, what I do want to point out is adding this LR mix fader here. It does add an extra layer of sends to the sides that is not on the mids. So the mids have one less step of a um, routing layer on there, if you will, than what the sides do. So if you have delay compensation problems, anything like that, this could be a glaring problem. Um, there's obviously a lot of ways to set, well, I don't want to say a lot of ways, there are other ways to set this matrix up in which you would add, say, one less layer, one more layer, this is the way I find it the easiest and the best way to set up, but for this to work, uh, delay compensation has to be on and working well. But I just wanted to point that out. Um, so you just want to be cautious uh, with your phase coherency and your plugins. Uh, delay compensation should take care of most any of your problems, but we've seen more than one Pro Tools build where routing combinations, uh, busing techniques, things like that can make the delay compensation completely fall apart. So we definitely want to be cautious with that. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, for any questions, comments, anything like that, please hit up our website. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.